Pet and Virtue Zone. On Dubai Eye 103.8. Get questions in to us, 4001. This is starting up with Virtue Zone of a Tuesday morning, broadcasting live on Dubai I-103.8 FM. And we're asking you to post your questions and thoughts now. There might be a question to 4001. Just text it in to us or, of course, at Virtue Zone or at Virtue Zone underscore UAE. Myself and Neil Petch live with you here in studio and joined now by a true leader, a true visionary, and a true influencer, not of the Instagram style, but an influencer in the world of all things SME. We're discussing the opportunities for entrepreneurs in Dubai and whether it's becoming the startup capital of the world. Becoming or become. Uh, thanks to the leaders of the UAE uh, and Dubai, much is being done to promote and help the startup community here and make it a really attractive place to start a business and succeed. Dubai SME is the agency of Dubai economy tasked with developing the sector. Last week, it unveiled yet another uh, incubator called Startup, uh, specialised in digital health technologies. It brings the number of business incubators certified by Dubai SME to 13 now. Uh, one man who must be given a huge amount of credit for driving not just that latest uh, incubator, but all those that have gone before, is the CEO of Dubai SME, His Excellency Abdul Basit Al Janahi, who kindly joins us live on the line and live via Microsoft Teams this morning. Abdul Basit, thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Long time no see, my friend. <laughs> it's been, a, I was just saying to Neil, I might throw to you for your, uh, to, to get your thoughts on one of our finalists in a few moments' time, but that might be out of, bed, out of place. No, great to have you on board. Thank you so much. It's been a long time, but it's been a very successful and creative time for you and your team. Um, I want to start there first, Abdul Bessit, if we can, in terms of, look, there are other destinations available around the world, but why? Why? Is Dubai such an attractive place for startups and entrepreneurs, in your opinion? Uh, thank you for the introduction, really. I think uh, you, you have given me more than, than I deserve. But why Dubai? I think, um, Tom, uh, we've seen it all. Uh, one, when it comes to uh, the, uh, the, the boom, uh, the 2008 crisis, COVID, I think the resilience, the infrastructure, the attitude of the leaders and the people of Dubai, all of us, me, you, uh, Neil, uh, all the entrepreneurs, the infrastructure that we have put, the pro-business that we've been always raised uh, for, I think this makes it uh, totally different. I think when it comes even to uh, the connectivity, uh, the technology, uh, the aspiration, the success stories over the years that, that really came out of Dubai. Uh, Dubai is a beacon of entrepreneurship in this region. Been, been a beacon for the past 40 years, but now we're going to the second and the third phase of, of being different introducing new stuff, challenging ourselves and challenging the region when it comes to starting mega projects, startups, uh, things that the region were reluctant. We always, we are the go-getters. We go after it and we do it when we prove it that we can, we can do it. That, that attitude makes Dubai different. And I think uh, what we've seen during COVID uh, just just look around us and, and how uh, leadership has has con I mean handled this this pandemic uh, and how we balanced between uh, a community how to live and the economy yes it is difficult but I think the way the the, the government the leadership have handled it, makes it a different. This, all this really puts a lot of trust in the system, the trust in the leadership, trust in the government. Uh, mm. Pro-business, uh, proactive, uh, we're open for ideas. A uh, couple of, uh, two years ago, I was talking to one of the guys, he said, I mean, if, if, I, want, if I want to start something which is totally new, uh, if it's fintech, uh, if it's anything related to technology, there, there aren't laws and regulations. But the best place to do it is in Dubai. 
Uh, this is the, uh, I mean, uh, the best place to to have a proof of concept, and the rest is history for them. And I think we've seen it with with Kareem. Uh, we have a very good relationship, and we have invested in Beehive. I mean, you're talking about a fintech, and 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 there are so many, so many uh, examples out there. Abdul Bassett, uh, you're here in some ways representing the government today. I just want to make a, a, a little opinion as, as a company owner. You can tell so much from a country, from a company, by how the employees react to adversity. COVID has brought us adversity, and I think that the SME workforce right across the UA has reacted by rolling their sleeves up, working harder and making it happen, and that reflects what the Dubai government is doing. So I have a little surprise for you, Abdul Bassett, today. I think you met yeah. uh, Tom uh, on The Entrepreneur. on, on uh, right. many years ago. And, yeah, many years ago. And I always used to joke that I love everything about the UAE, but I just wish Sheikh Mohammed could affect the weather. Well, since then, he's, of course, started seeding the clouds. So I guess he's managed that as well. And I just want to congratulate you, Abdul Bassett, because uh, in conjunction with Gulf Business, uh, Ian Fair Service asked Virtue Zone to create a series of the influencers, the most influential people in the UA startup scene. And you're on that list, the Rainmakers. So many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a privilege, really. Now... See that Yes, uh, Neil, I think all of us in the government of Dubai, starting from the government employees to the people of Dubai, mm. the passion that we, we, when we do something, there is so much passion in, 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 in whatever we do. If it's government job, if it's a startup, we love to help. We, 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 we love to, to, uh, to see people succeed. I think that kind of attitude is something that money cannot buy. Now, Abdul Bassett, I do want to ask you a question because I, I believe that uh, there are 13 registered incubators uh, with yes. Dubai SME. The UAE, as Tom was uh, just saying, and as I pontificate constantly, is the most efficient place to be to be registered. Um, you've mentioned a, a, a few outstanding uh, 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 companies that, that we can talk about globally. That said... Um, you know, if you're in L.A., it's pretty easy to find companies to invest in and it's pretty easy to find investors. There's that sort of meeting uh, point, the beehive, if you like to mention one company that you have uh, uh, mentioned. But with these incubators, you know, I think uh, there's, a, there's a sort of feeling in, in the community that we, we just need to connect the dots a little bit better to make it more accessible. Because as, as you know, startups access to money is is, dif is difficult here. So can I ask you, uh, Your Excellency, what are the top three priorities the Dubai government have to to facilitate just connecting the dots that little bit more so that we have better deal flow than India, than Europe and America? A very good, uh, complex question, Neil. I think uh, we, we've been evolving. I'll just give you an example when it comes to the incubators. Uh, pre-2014, we, we did not have a regulation or, or a license related to incubators. We had only business centers. Uh, we used to run and we still run our own incubator. And as a government agency, to, to, to accelerate the incubation uh, of, uh, of companies, uh, as a government agency, you cannot do it all, uh, as simple as that. You cannot be into digital uh, technology, and into robotics, into retail, sustainability. You cannot have one incubator. So we've decided in 2014-15, and with his guidance of, uh, of His, his Highness Sheikh Hamdan, uh, that we, we, we uh, deregulate this and we uh, help private sector to set up their own incubators in different fields and different geographic locations. So this is one thing that we've been, we've done, I think we've done quite successfully within one and a half year, we're talking about 13 incubators, vary in different kind of, uh, of, uh, of sectors. Uh, now, a lot of, when we, when we say incubators, these are people who have set up uh, these incubators with with uh, with the mandate of investing in these startups. So they're not just hosting them, but 
investing in them, uh, networking for them, uh, creating deal flows for them, taking them to the, to the next uh, level. I think when it comes to the regulation, uh, in the past uh, two, three years, you're talking about we've set up our own uh, investment arm. Uh, we've helped even Beehive to start when it comes to access to finance. Today we have Emirates Development Bank. Uh, they are looking uh, and they have their own fund and the financing scheme for startups and uh, and, and and SMEs. Um, DIFC has been attracting a lot of VCs, private equity. I think the big but the big change that we we will see in terms of shifting people from from investing in, in the conventional ways of of, of uh, investing, let's say, in, in, in real estate, but looking at opportunities in, in technology and in startups. And and to be to be honest with you, I think we're we're very close to that. Uh, there is a push from the government. There are some announcements that are coming up. I, I cannot tell you now till till the, the, the authorities do it. But access to finance, I think. It's getting much better. Speaking of uh, finance, Abdul Bassett, we see that you have uh, just recently unveiled Startup, an incubator specializing in digital health technology. Now, I think yes. what the UAE has done with reference to COVID has allowed us business owners to open up our businesses and our customers to come in in, in confidence, which is incredible. And quite a large part of that, I guess, is the use of digital technology to, to allow us to share information about where we are with respect to that can you uh, shed some light on, on, on what you're doing in this sector? When it comes to the, the for example, Z startup, uh, they are investing in, uh, in uh, and they're located close to the health, healthcare city, and they are investing in startups. They are investing, they're not just hosting them. So uh, they're, they are injecting capital in these startups when it comes to uh, healthcare related logistic. Uh, logistic, healthcare, logistic-related uh, startups, and so many of them. Um, for us, it's, it's very important. We are here to enable these startups. We are here to enable uh, the, the the incubators and even uh, the private equity and angel investors uh, to to bring them all together in, in one platform uh, through Dubai SME. Introduce these uh, these opportunities and accelerate these opportunities. We we do not just bring them together. We look at the issues, the challenges. Definitely when you have a new technology, you will have maybe it's regulated, it's not regulated. Maybe they need to meet the right people. Uh, Neil, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, we've launched a program called the uh, Innovation Attraction Program, where we, we even attract new innovations uh, coming from abroad, from so we have a network of 15 uh, countries which are part of this uh, startup alliance, uh, and uh, we select uh, startups that are going through growth uh, stage and and they want to test, for instance, medical equipment in the United Arab Emirates and specifically in Dubai. Uh, imagine if these startups come here and they want to speak to to authorities, to decision makers. It's very difficult if they go on their own. We do that. Mm. Uh, we introduce them to people who have appetite uh, to invest in startups and medical care, for instance. Uh, we know who's doing what, what they need to do, what they're looking for, what's the appetite. We put them on the right uh, track. Uh, we even help them in setting up in Dubai. Uh, through Dubai SME and, and, and guide them through the process. Yeah. I, I think uh, um, there isn't a place in, 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 in this region that do all this. Uh, and uh, alhamdulillah, I think uh, we've been doing very successfully, uh, successfully and uh, and we're looking forward for, for next, for the next big thing. Long may that continue. Listen, we could talk for hours and hours and hours. We've got so much to catch up on, my friend, but unfortunately time is out on this occasion. Who knows, we could turn this into a TV series and do it over 10 episodes yeah, or something I like that. Not, but we will be looking a bit older, <laughs> a bit older. Yeah, well, I'm certainly a lot greyer. You're not, that's for sure. So you're looking as young as ever. Uh, Your Excellency, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us today. Our thanks to you and your team down at 
uh, Dubai SME uh, to His Excellency Abdul Basid Al-Janahi, the CEO of Dubai SME. We thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you.